And if you don't believe me, I think there is a serious leadership crisis on this, in this world today. Now, I've picked up American companies here because these are more popularly known across the world. Dirk Yeager, Procter & Gamble. Jill Barad of Mattel. Rick Sloman, Xerox. Doug Ivester, Coca-Cola. Dale Morrison, Campbell, Soup. Rick McGinn, Lucent. Michael Hawley of Gillette. And I can add to this list Mr. Yoran Lindahl of ABB. All these guys lost their jobs in less than a year. There is a serious leadership crisis. There is a serious leadership crisis. If you just take the market capitalization of these companies, including ABBs, and add it all up, it is perhaps so large, it is perhaps so large in the context of this earth, that you must wonder how you can have such pathetic leadership at the top. Because this means that we are actually allowing mediocre people to have control, have the reins of large sums of capital, and we expect them to perform, and when they don't perform, we give them a few, you know, hundred million dollars and retire them. And I think that is a crime against humanity in my opinion. And this is what David Clutterbuck was talking about in the morning, you know. Who, is the, who are the guys to tell these guys what they're doing wrong? Who is telling them what's wrong? Maybe some of you in this room belong to this category. Think about it. Do you really have someone who's telling you that you could do something differently and at least asking you to reflect upon what you're doing? Because that will bring about a transformational change in your organization. Lasting profitability, increase in stakeholder value, new wealth creation, all those things will begin to happen provided you create that. So here, the two wonderful one-liners of Jack Welch says, tyranny is not leadership and cruelty is not edge. And here is a little story. I was working for a Norwegian company. They had a vice president, the boss, you know, literally the, the number, number two, who had been there for eight years, all of a sudden they replaced him with someone else. Now, this someone else took over and the, his, the old number two had not yet left. I mean, they tried to create a situation where they could accommodate both people in the same company. Now, obviously, this was not working because the guy who was, who was now number two was very unhappy. And the guy who was number one found that this number two was coming as a stumbling block and everything. So. I was asked to come in to help them resolve their issues. And you know what? It was amazing what the real issues were. This gentleman who was number one for so many years, eight years, his management, his bosses kept telling him what a wonderful guy he was. And suddenly after eight years, they said, you're no good, we're going to replace you with someone else. So what happened? Did he beat his wife at night and change or what? So what really happened to him? Eight years, his company thought he was okay. The ninth year, they thought it was not okay. They brought someone else in. When we went to discover what is it that was not okay, the board told me, no, 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 we always knew that there was something wrong with this guy. I said, why didn't you tell him for eight years? Well, you know, we were telling him in many ways, really? But you didn't figure out whether he was listening to you or not? And you gave him promotions, you gave him increments, you gave him bonuses, you gave him everything for eight years? And suddenly, they had to ask him to go. And I said, you have no moral right to ask him to go. He has got two kids going to college. He has got two grown-up children going to college. He's 53 years old. If you get rid of him now, that is cruelty. That is tyranny. Asking him to go now because he is inefficient is tyrannical. That is not leadership. That is cruelty. And in fact, we had to work out a mechanism where that man would not pay a price because his board did not know to open its mouth and like to be a nice person for eight years. You understand what I mean? I don't know whether you face such problems or not, but this is true. There is another interesting situation I find often in organizations. But Sam, I am not the boss. What should I do? I am not the boss. You know, the boss, everyone upstairs is no good. I am great. Of course, everyone downstairs is no good either. So I am the only wonderful guy and ask everyone, they all say the same thing. This is quite interesting. So 
So I'm reminded of something what Gary Hamill calls the activist rule. And you can think of all these people, Gandhi, Mandela, Havel, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King. One thing common about all these people is none of them was in power when they actually started their movement. In fact, this made me think of one thing. I mean, when is the last time the Queen of England stood outside Buckingham Palace and said, let us have a revolution? Well, I'm just wondering. Revolution never begins in the castle. It begins at the fringes. It never, no, no king or queen says, let's get rid of me. Have you ever seen that one? So, the activist rule is this. The change does not have to start at the top.